Remember, you're a servant, not a savior. Remember, you're not here to get glory, you're here to give glory. You're not here to be worshipped, you're here to worship. You see, that's the inversion law. Because everything within you, because everything within the world says, hey man, you want to be satisfied? Do you want to be really satisfied? Man, then do something, get people to serve you. Because you're the man then, right? I mean, people are serving you, that, you'll be satisfied. God says, no. Jesus said, what? The servant of all. Paul, you, listen, you're a servant. S true satisfaction not, doesn't come in being served, but it comes in serving. All the world says, man, you want to be satisfied? Get some glory for yourself. Do something that causes everybody to go, oh, look at him. Isn't he great? Man, he's the greatest football player, the greatest basketball player, the greatest businessman. He's got all these business principles. He's turned around. He is an awesome man. Woo, yeah. Look at that. He's great. No, the, the inversion law says, no, true satisfaction doesn't come and you're great because that gets knocked out from under you very quickly. And then you're not great anymore. You're horrible if that's what you base it on. Paul says true satisfaction comes not in getting glory, but in giving glory. It's not in being worshipped, but it's in worshipping. That's the inversion law. That's what true satisfaction comes in. And, and, and Paul had a sense of satisfaction, total satisfaction. Why? Because God had used him to bring the pagan Gentiles into obedience with Christ. Not because he was special. Not because he said eloquence of speech. Not because he had done everything right. Not because, man, he come from a Christian family and, man, he knew all the P's and the Q's and he knew all the Christian cultural etiquette. And No, because, man, he was obedient and his goal was God's glory. Paul woke up today and he said, my goal, God's glory. My goal, God's glory. That's it. I want to live for Christ. I'm not here to be worshipped. I'm here to worship. I'm not here to, to, to receive glory. I'm here to give glory. I'm not here to be served. I'm here to serve. And he was satisfied because God done so much through that. Let me ask you something. Are you satisfied with what God's doing in through you for his kingdom? Are you satisfied? I hope nobody's shaking their head yes. I really don't. I, I, I really do hope nobody's shaking their head yes. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I wish I could say like Paul, I'm satisfied, but I'm not. You know, I, I need to be, lay more obedience and more. That's, that, that, that's, that's the life. I want to wake up every day and say, my goal, God's glory today. I hope you're not satisfied, but if you're not what do you need to do about it? What do you need to do about it? That's why I ask you, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with what God's doing in your life? Are you satisfied with where you are spiritually? I hope you're not because here's what I know. The closer you get, if you are, you're probably not very mature because the closer you get to Christ, the more you realize, wow, I just got so much further to go. When you start thinking, oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing pretty good. You're not doing near as good as you think. So are you satisfied? No. The question, real question is, what do you need to do about it? What do you need to do about it? What do you need to do for God to do so much more within you?